Seki and Shimizu have to be two of the most intriguing side characters for me. Seki might just be my favorite character out of Pun Pun if we don't count as Hamburger Kiss, you know. With that name alone, just her existence makes it an unfair competition, but from my understanding, this side story is generally pretty liked, and I think the reason for that is probably just that Seki and Shimizu are among the more normal characters, or at least among the not evil characters in Pun Pun. Seki is this kind of bad boy with a hard shell, softy on the inside type of kitchen sink philosopher, whereas Shimizu is the softiest soft boy ever with a wild imagination. I think it's kind of cool how both of them seem to be trapped inside their own heads in a sense. Shimizu obviously has his delusions and hallucinations, some of which I guess might be real technically. If we consider what Inyo Asano has said about Pegasus, I made a video about that so you can check it out if you're interested. But Seki on the other hand is is burdened by existential thoughts, questions, and perhaps most of all the conclusions and answers he ends up on regarding the subjects he ponders. He continuously talks down on himself throughout the series, describing himself as a shallow-headed kid or suspicious punk because he considers his own thoughts pointless, however he doesn't really have a way to escape them aside from maybe acting out, which might be the reason he was kind of a troublesome child, which is sad to see because he's clearly a very smart kid although he may suffer from a bit of 8th grader syndrome early on in the story, but as he grows older he turns into a total workaholic, stating that the only time he doesn't think about anything is while working, and I think that's so relatable. Having an escape from whatever might be troubling you is so comforting, whatever the escape might be, it could be music, manga, work. As much as I like Seki, however, I can see how some readers might absolutely despise him, considering how controlling and mean he tends to be towards Shin Shimizu in their friendship. Shimizu is made out to be kind of an airhead and helpless, and it could definitely be argued that Seki is at least somewhat responsible for that, being as controlling as he is and not letting Shimizu do his own thing. But I think Seki's side is so understandable, and this is where the spoilers come in, so heads up. And when I say understandable, just know that I don't mean that as in justifiable. Okay, so Seki and Shimizu have been friends ever since kindergarten. Shimizu's mom used to pick both of them up because Seki's mom was always too busy. One day, they're all holding hands while walking over a zebra crossing and Seki sees a truck driving full speed at them. He has to make a split-second decision to either save Shimizu or Shimizu's mom. He ends up saving Shimizu and Shimizu's mom dies in the crash. Seki covers Shimizu's eyes and tells him she's still fine, and from then on out, Seki makes protecting Shimizu his duty. That's a crazy fucking burden for a kid to bear, and after an incident like that, it's no wonder Seki would feel frightened about the idea of something happening to Shimizu, thus making him overprotective. And if we also take into consideration how Seki's own family life is portrayed, it's safe to assume he doesn't have a very good model of really anything, I guess. I think one of the most shocking scenes in the entire manga is when they're both around 20 years old and Seki finds out that for all these years, Shimizu still thinks his mother is alive and has been seeing her in his hallucinations. And as mean as Seki has been towards Shimizu, it's at this moment that he says the most foul shit and completely loses his composure like never before. Having to read that part again for this video was... <sighs> Yikes. I think it becomes apparent once Shimizu joins the Pegasus Orchestra that Seki is actually the one who needs Shimizu more than the other way around. While Shimizu is ignoring him and doing just fine with his new community where he genuinely feels needed, Seki is the one who becomes miserable. The entire Pegasus Orchestra story obviously has a very sad ending, and depending on your interpretation, you might find Seki's and Shimizu's story even sadder or much happier. After Seki brings Shimizu out of the the burning building, there's a scene where Shimizu has seemingly lost his memory and asks Seki who he is. Seki, annoyed, simply answers, uh, whatever, I'm your friend. Seki's final appearance in the manga is at an elementary school reunion, where his old classmates ask how Shimizu is doing, and he tells them Shimizu works as a nurse. Some believe that Shimizu died, and now Seki is the one imagining he's still alive, and some just take it at face value and just believe that Shimizu actually did lose his memory. I personally like happy or happy-ish endings, so I choose the latter. It's both a beautiful and terrifying story about friendship that'll forever stick with me, possibly 
possibly even more so than the story of Pun Pun himself. All right, that's about it. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to subscribe and turn on the bell notifications so you don't miss out on any new videos. Follow me on Twitter and Twitch at Fukuro Fetus. And uh, yeah, I just made a Patreon page. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I don't expect anyone to support me there and I'm not offering any additional content But I just have a one euro tier there in case there are some lunatics out there that just want to support me So yeah, there's that. Uh, all right. Have a great one. Peace <laughs>